From ancient times, humans have always seen to one-upping each other, especially when it comes to firepower. From throwing spears, bow and arrow, crossbows, guns and cannons. It always seemed to be a bit about who has the largest cannon that can shoot the furthest. But one question springs to mind. What does the end of this journey look like? And science fiction has provided an answer. The railgun. Seen in many sci-fi franchises, this destructive device seems to obliterate anything it is ever directed at. But is this marvel of overwhelming firepower something that can only ever exist in our fantasy? Or is it something that we can build in reality? This is the question we are going to answer in this video, where we give the railgun a reality check. So how is it supposed to work? A railgun is a type of electromagnetic cannon. This means it uses electric currents to propel its projectile. So far so good. But how exactly does it do that? By using the electromagnetic force, or Lorentz force. Let's look at this diagram right here. These two parallel rails form the positive and negative terminals of a circuit. When we bridge that gap with a conductive bullet, and run a high current through the system, a strong electromagnetic field will be created. This field then propels the projectile forwards using the Lorentz force. Why? Science, physics. Conductors in a magnetic field will always experience acceleration in relation to that field, according to the right hand rule shown here. So the railgun just exploits this effect in an extreme way. So the physics check out. But just because it's physically possible does not necessarily mean it's technically doable or useful for that matter. So let's look at some of the mechanical difficulties next. One of, if not the biggest problem of railguns is durability. That might go back to its tendency to shoot out its own barrel with a bullet like a toddler refusing food. Ah. Since the projectile needs to be always in contact with the rails, these get worn down extremely fast. Just imagine rubbing up against something extremely hard, traveling several times the speed of sound, whilst being heated to a toasty 800 degrees Celsius and in the meantime being electrocuted with millions of amps. While that sounds like the condition your dad describes his walks to school have been like, in actuality, there is no material known to humankind that can withstand these conditions for more than the best a couple shots. First iterations of the railgun were actually single use because of that. Imagine a cannon that needs a new barrel every shot. It's not exactly what I would call useful. The other big hurdle is energy delivery. In physics, as in life, there are no free meals. Every bit of energy that you want to pump into a projectile needs to come from somewhere. In conventional weapons, this would be in the form of powder in a cartridge. Since railguns do not use explosives to fire, that energy needs to be provided from the outside in the form of electricity. The only way to realistically do that is to use giant capacitor banks that get charged in between shots and then unleash their power in one instant. These banks, however, are bulky and extremely heavy. Also, the power requirements are staggering, easily reaching multiple megawatts to fire a few times per minute. So forget about mounting this on anything else than a turret or a large ship. So we get that a railgun, while not physically impossible, is extremely hard to build reliably. But does its usefulness at least make up for its drawbacks? With all these problems in mind, it would need to pack quite a punch in order for it to be worth the trouble. Let's look at the current prototype of railgun in action.
Okay, so I think that looks very promising after all. Or does it? While the firepower of this gun is very impressive, it's not like conventional guns can't do this as well. Look at this Chinese test of an armor-piercing round comparable to that of the railgun. Not much of a difference. So does it have any advantages over conventional weapons? Yes, mainly the speed of its projectile and the potentially low cost of running it. A faster projectile allows you to intercept threats sooner and more accurately, thus making this a great addition to, for example, a ship's armament, where sea-skimming ultra-fast missiles are a problem. These only show up over the horizon like 25 to at max 60 seconds before impact. So shooting something extremely fast at them allows you to intercept them sooner, more accurately, and further away from your ship and your crew. The other great advantage comes from the projectiles themselves, in that they are way less complicated and thus way cheaper than conventional ammunition. Since they do not need explosives to function, this munition can be stored more compactly and is a lot safer to handle than its counterpart. Also, you don't need to worry about getting hit in your munition storage, which spells the end for most combat vehicles. So I think I told you all the most relevant information that we need to make a third. So at least currently, or anytime soon, railguns are not a viable replacement for conventional cannons, since their drawbacks do not outweigh their advantages. At this moment, it is a literal glass cannon. However, the strength of railguns is mostly limited by power delivery and material science, so the potential of railguns is extremely strong. With more efficient batteries and more durable materials, there is basically no limit to the potential of a railgun. This is, in my opinion, their biggest advantage. The speed of a conventional bullet is always limited by the speed of the explosion propelling it. You can only make them more powerful up to a certain point. With railguns, there's no such limitation. So you could potentially accelerate a projectile as fast as you want, really. Because of this, I think we can rate the railgun as viable in the near future. But it will need quite some time for them to become better than conventional weapons. But it is almost guaranteed that they will. So more research and funding for this technology is, in my opinion, viable. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And always remember, always avoid the snapback zone.